tear down. It'll go very quickly afterwards as we carry stuff and put things away. A uh, few announcements. Our next outdoor worship will be in two weeks, uh, again in the park. So we invite you to plan on that and two weeks after that as well. Invite your prayers for the Feudy family as Joe died on Tuesday. Uh, there's a visitation today at Walker on uh, Sylvania. The services are private tomorrow. However, if you go to, to uh, the Walker website and click on, on the information about Joe, uh, you can watch the service tomorrow online at 11 a.m. So you can participate in that way as well. We'll hold that family in our prayers. With that, I invite you to uh, prepare our hearts for worship as we have our call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. 
We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your By, grace, forgive, forgive us. us. Through your love, love renew us. us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing, Morning Has Broken. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We join in our hymn of praise. pray. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you bring salvation to the world. Give us strength to believe in him that we may share in his victory over the power of death and fulfill the purpose for which you have made us. For he dwells with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Ephesians chapter 2. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus 
so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John, glory to you, O Lord. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow afterward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. We invite Gail to come up with our children's message. We're going to do things a little differently today um, because... We're not sure if it's safe to bring all the kids up yet, so I'm just going to do a children's message with Ellie. So you want to sit? You want to stand? What do you want to do? We'll sit. Okay. So remember last week when we watched Toy Story 4, and there was Bonnie, and there was Forky, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what did Bonnie do um, on her first day of school when she was really nervous? What did she do? She made a friend. She made a friend. And who was her friend? Forky. Forky. Um, Now, was Forky something that she could have bought in the store? No. No? How did she meet Forky? She made him. She made him. Do you remember where she found the supplies to make him? Mm Mm-hmm. Where? The trash. In the trash. So Bonnie was scared on her first day of school, and she found all the supplies she needed to make her friend Forky out of the trash. And then what was kind of funny throughout the whole time, Forky kept saying, I'm trash. He kept saying, I'm trash, I'm trash. Put me away, I'm not a toy. And then Woody kept saving him, right? Mm -hmm. Kept taking him out and said, no, you are Bonnie. She created you. You are her friend. Well, in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, which was the New Testament reading for today, um, Paul is saying we were all created. Do you know who created us? God. Yeah, God created us. And do we belong in the trash? No. Did God create us to love each other? Yeah. Yeah. So that's um, what I think about Toy Story. That's why I enjoyed watching that so much with you and, and seeing Forky say, I'm trash and trash. And then there was the beautiful moment when Forky realized that he was created to be a friend. And I look forward to that day with everybody when we um, come to that realization that we were all created by God and that we're all his children and that none of us belong in the trash and none of us deserve to be treated anything other than a child of God, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Should we pray? Yeah. Okay. Let's close our eyes. Hold our hands. Dear Lord, thank you for creating everything that we are and everything that you've done for us. We pray that we are constantly and always reminded that we are yours, children of your own creation. In your name we pray. Amen. Toy Story 4 in this series, um, You've Got a Friend in Me. And while I know there were a lot of people who, when we started this with Toy Story 1, had seen that, how many of you have seen Toy Story 4? Okay, a few hands, but definitely less than the first one. Um, I admit that I had not seen Toy Story 4 when we started this series. I'd watched the first three countless times, 
but the fourth one I just hadn't watched for whatever reason and actually I know the reason I liked the end of Toy Story 3 so much I wasn't sure I wanted Toy Story 4 I wasn't sold on a new person for these toys or a new life or what they could do with a story so if you watched the Toy Story 3, you know to the very end, Andy, who has been the boy who these toys have belonged to all along, um, is going off to college, and so he gifts his toys to Bonnie, a little girl that he meets, or that um, Woody actually meets, and suggests that he donate them to. And Bonnie is a preschooler at the time, and she takes these toys and loves them. And they have playtime again, and things are going all right. So Toy Story 4 begins a couple of years later when Bonnie is headed off to kindergarten. And she is anxious about this. How many of you have ever been anxious about doing something new? Okay, a fair number of hands. Um, for Bonnie, kindergarten is the unknown. It is new, it is different, and she's nervous. And Woody, who feels it is his job to take care of her, even though he is no longer the favorite toy, he goes along with her to kindergarten to try to help her out. And when she gets anxious, as Gail explained just a moment ago, she decides to make a friend. But this isn't a friend that she meets, this is a friend that she literally makes. She makes Forky out of a spork and a pipe cleaner and a popsicle stick and some Google eyes and she makes a friend. And she writes her name on Forky's feet or popsicle sticks as the case may be. And so when they come home, Woody introduces Forky to the toys that are gathered, saying Bonnie made a friend, and they're all excited, and then he's like, no, Bonnie made a friend, and out comes Forky. And Forky is convinced that he is trash and not a toy, because that's what he was made out of, was things meant to be thrown away. And throughout the entire beginning of this movie, we go with Forky's crisis of who am I and what am I doing here? Forky says, I am trash, and constantly tries to throw himself away. And Woody says, you are a toy, and constantly tries to rescue him. Because Woody knows that Forky is, for whatever reason, Bonnie's favorite toy. And Forky cannot be lost. Even though Forky is completely convinced that he is trash. It kind of reaches a climax when Forky throws himself out of a moving vehicle and Woody throws himself after to go bring Forky back to Bonnie. And they have this over and over again conversation. You are a toy. You are loved. You were created by someone and you are loved by her and you are meant to be with her. No matter what you think you are, you are a toy. And the job of a toy is to make children happy, to be there for them. Now, of course, the movie can't end that simply, and it continues with Woody having his own moment of who am I and what am I doing here as he sees um, as they go to back to where Bonnie is, he and Forky on their walk back, Woody sees in a window of a shop um, what was Bo Peep's lamp. And Bo Peep had been donated years before and he wants to rescue her from this store. And in the process, he runs across another toy who is the villain of this story, Gabby Gabby who is a toy who was created to be a toy and she knows she was created to be a toy, but when she was created, she was defective. Her voice box didn't work. And because of that, she was never treated as a toy. She was treated as trash. So you have one toy who thinks he's trash, but is a toy and you have another toy who knows she's a toy, but is treated as trash. And to both of them, Woody convinces them they are toys and finds ways for them to experience love 
and to share love, to fulfill their purpose, and to be there for a child who loves them and cares for them. And along the way, Woody has to come up with his own answer of who he is and what he's doing here now. As his children are growing up and he is no longer needed, what can his purpose be? We find it striking that at the very end of this series, we are kind of back to that very beginning question. Who am I and what am I doing here? After all, that's the way Toy Story 1 began with Buzz Lightyear who was convinced he was a space ranger and who it took an entire movie to convince he was a toy. Who am I and what am I doing here? This runs throughout all the Toy Story movies, more, likely, more than likely because it runs throughout our lives. There have to be times when each of us is questioned who am I or what am I doing here? Sometimes it's a deeper question and sometimes it's literally a what on earth am I doing in this situation? How did I find myself here and how do I get out? Sometimes we've gotten there of our own making and sometimes the situation has come up around us but either way we face that question of what do we do? And to that question, we are reminded we are who God has made us to be. Whether it's for a moment's doubt or whether it's a deeper wondering, it's a deeper questioning. We are who God has created us to be. We are loved. We were created out of love and while God's name was not written on our feet, instead it is written on our foreheads in the sign of the cross. It is written on our hearts. We are who God created us to be. For we are what God has made us created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. But even back before that, we go back to the very beginning of Genesis. And we hear, so God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And a chapter later in Genesis 2, then the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. For out of dust, we were created. Out of love, we were created. We are loved. We are beloved. It began a few weeks ago with a verse from Psalm 139. I praise you, O Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I remind all of you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And in times of self-doubt and in times of questioning, when you wonder who you are and what you are doing here, remember that you are beloved, you are children of God, and you are called here for good works. We are not called only to exist, but to exist for the sake of each other. And we have had to figure out, especially in these last few months of pandemic and of unrest, what that means for each of us. What is our place and what is our role to speak out, to care for one another, to protect and safeguard one another, to provide for one another, to do good works this day and always, not because we have to, but because that is who we are. God created us out of love and God created us to be love for one another. So we too are called to love. To use the things we've been given, whether they are extra things, whether they are things we think are trash, whether they are skills that we value, whether they are possessions or time or prayers, to use those for the good of all so that no one would ever question or believe that they are trash. So that all of God's children, so that each of God's children will know this truth. That they are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of a loving God, created to be community and to love one another. 
I invite you to pray with me. God, we give you thanks for making each of us. We ask you to be with us in those moments of doubt, in those moments of wondering, in those moments of indecision. To remind us that you have written your names on, name on our forehead and in our hearts. That you love us. And that you call us to be that love in the world. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join in our hymn. our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Testing, testing, testing. Check, 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 check. Check, check. All right, there we go. At the end of each petition, I'll offer the words, uh, Hear us, O God, and you'll respond, Your mercy is great. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. 
a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is is great. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially Ralph and Jim, and those that we now name before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In our lives, in you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places, especially Job. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with our offertory music. of goodness and growth all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens water and word wine and bread these are signs of your abundant grace nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through jesus christ our strength and our song amen the lord be with you the night in which he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread 
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. He taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy All right. Am I back? Not yet. Okay. A few words of instruction before the benediction. Um, we have hand sanitizer up here, and there are wafers individually wrapped, uh, both regular and the smaller baskets, gluten-free. There's red wine and white grape juice, and you can go those. If you have offerings to bring, you can place them as you come up, but you'll come up this way and go around and out the tent that direction. Uh, in your bulletin is a post-communion prayer. You can pray after you've consumed your elements. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor